Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Drew Stevens. I wanted to introduce myself, and I wanted to have the opportunity to introduce this course to you. What I'm about to share with you for the next three to five minutes is just a couple of classroom success tips that will make this class very easy to, for you to accommodate. First of all, I want to express my thanks for taking the class. I'm very interested in helping you out with this particular class itself, and I'm looking forward to facilitating it with you over the course of the next several weeks. A little bit about my background is that uh, I've been in business now since around 1984, 1985. I got my start on Wall Street, <clears throat> was servicing some of the largest investment and commercial banks for the better part of about 17 to 18 years, and then subsequently moved in 1999 to here in St. Louis. Once I was here, I've worked for several universities and I've had my own business since that amount of time. And that it really followed two parallel paths. I was doing a lot of advisory for small family owned businesses, but at the same time, because I was talking to them in a fiduciary role, now have helped them with estate and retirement planning and as such, have now worked with individuals on their retirement and estate planning uh, needs. From that particular perspective, I have a lot of emphasis on the corporate side. I've been a CEO several times for several entrepreneurial companies. I've worked as a chief operating officer, and I was also involved in four publicly held IPOs over the course of my career. So there's a lot of experience that I tend to bring to this classroom. As far as... <clears throat> A couple of logistics for me. Well, a few things. You'll see my email. You'll see my telephone number in the screen. I do return all phone calls and emails within about 90 minutes or less when you do need me. But I do ask you to maintain three things. Number one, first and foremost, if you need to get a hold of me, I tend to turn the phone off after roughly 6, 630 at night. So emailing me at 8, 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night will be a futile effort simply because I will not be available. I don't start my day until anywhere between 9 and 10 o'clock in the morning. So emailing me at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, letting me know that information is going to be late, technical issues, I'll get to that uh, momentarily here, but it will be a futile effort because I won't see the phone until at least 9, 30, 10. Weekends, <clears throat> every now and again, I may respond on a Saturday, but that's the third and foremost, is I do leave Sundays for the family and for faith. I am at church, and when I'm not at church, we're just spending the day with family. So if you can keep hold of that, that would be help helpful. A couple of important dates this year to keep in mind. Monday the 16th happens to be Martin Luther King Day, so that will be a day off. On the 17th and 19th of January, I will be traveling on a business trip, so I won't be available much during the day for calls, emails, text messages, simply because I'm in a certification for my financial advisory, and I will be unavailable. I'm leaving on Monday and not returning until Friday, so contact may be a little slim at best, but I wanted to put that information out there for you. Your spring break at this particular point will be the 11th of March and runs through the 19th of March with Easter break being April 7th through the 9th. I don't think it'll affect us much, but did want to uh, mention that to you. And final exams will be the week of April 25th. For this particular course, this is a capstone course. And so we're going to be bringing this course on a different level. And that's why I wanted to present some PowerPoints to you so that you have an understanding of how I will typically run the class and things to make it accessible for you to have a very good grade in this particular class. First and foremost is that it does require you to have some keen thinking in the classroom. In this particular class, I've been the one that's helpful to develop it. We will not be utilizing a textbook. You will be using external resources, external resources from articles that I found on uh, the internet and specifically the Young Kellogg Library, and most importantly, the Harvard Business Review. So I, I would please ask you to look at the requirements and look at the syllabus because all of that information is listed in there. 
However, there are four very important factors in this particular class I want you to be attentive to. Number one, this is a class that's going to be focused on discussion on participation, simply because of the fact that this class is going to be involved on the internet. The fact is, is that participation is going to be required. You cannot sit back on your laurels and expect to get an exemplary grade in this class. It will require you to be participative, participative in discussion. I have an expectation that you will be submitting anywhere between four and five posts per week. Secondly, there is a business simulation in this class. And because there's a business simulation, it's going to require you to log in daily to take a look at that simulation. It's going to require you minimally to meet as a group because you will be assigned to groups and it will require you all to meet minimally once or twice a week to make your recommendations and put those recommendations in. And you will also be submitting a weekly management report. One person only needs to submit the management report, but everybody needs to be involved. <clears throat> Number three, there's going to be an assessment <clears throat> at the end of this class. Typically, that assessment will be in the second to last week, if not the third to last week of the class. But no matter what, that assessment needs to be done before the end of class because you will not be able to graduate. The only way for you to graduate is by finishing this class, getting an exemplary grade in this class, and taking the assessment. And last but not least, there will be a final group project. So I will require you to all be participative in that project. I will require that everybody be immersed in that project and show your best at all times when you're doing that project. The etiquette is to ask a lot of questions. Be in the moment, take notes, listen to the videos that I'm going to post online to take you through the class and help you out significantly with what needs to be done. I will ask, and again, that you have to engage in class discussion. I will tell you, I'm one of those people that thrives on interaction. So the more questions that you ask in discussion, the more involved you are, the more you're going to learn, especially because of the fact this being a capstone class and will involve everything that you've learned in this um, university over the last two to three years. It's really a culmination of everything that you have brought into the classroom. So from that particular perspective, because it is a capstone class, late work is not acceptable. And I want to say that one more time. Late work is unacceptable. That's not to say that, <clears throat> look, if something personal happens or if you're going to be traveling, many of you are athletes, I get it, the, or you're involved in other areas and other groups at the university, that's fine. As long as I know ahead of time, I'm willing to work with each and every one of you on a personal level. But the fact is, is that if you're just going to blow it off and put things in when willy nilly, you're not going to do very well in this class. I don't fail people. People start this class with an A, they keep an A. The only way that you're going to disown that A is by not doing the work and by keeping up with the guidelines in the classroom. Teamwork is a must. You will have two teams in this classroom, it's the same team, but the groups will be working in a simulation mode for the better part of five to six weeks in the class. And over the course of the, and the culmination of the full eight weeks, you'll be working on a group project. So it's required of you to be involved in the team at any and all times. And I will say this, <laughs> you all need to be active in that team. So I'm going to ask everybody in this classroom to please take an oath. If there's someone that's in your group that is not committed, I need to know sooner rather than later. And I don't want to say that again. If you see that somebody in your group is not committed, the sooner I know, the better I can amend the problem. If I don't know about it, I can't fix it, if at all, until the very, very end. I also want to let you know that in the last several years of teaching here at the university, as well as my 26 years of instruction, I've never had to come across plagiarism except for last term. It stinks, it's unnecessary, and it's unethical. But I will tell you that if I find that you're plagiarizing papers, that you're not providing attribution, 
that you're just copying and pasting in. Uh, your work will be sent to the Center for Disciplinary Action. And, I, and at that point, the university takes over for plagiarism. Plagiarism is not allowed. And more importantly, it's dishonest. And it goes against the mission, the vision, and values of this sacred university. Decorum in the classroom <clears throat> is simply this. I get it from every now, now and again. You're going to get tired. You're going to be sleepy. But I'm going to tell you that the, the, the more engaged you are in the classroom, the better off you're going to be. So I will ask you to please be immersed in all of the information that I'm going to share with you. And I'm also going to please ask you to be attentive at all times. Because of the fact that this is an online classroom, <clears throat> it's very easy to wait until Sunday evening and submit work. But I'm going to tell you that attendance is mandatory. And the more you are involved during the week, the better off you're going to be. There is no reason why you should not be turning in your work uh, and checking into the classroom at least four to five times in a seven day week. Last but not least is the fact if you have any technical issues, don't call me. There's nothing that I can do. I would love to say that I can help you. I am technically astute. But the fact is, is that with numerous browsers, with numerous computers, with many other items that are out there, it's very difficult for me to diagnose the problem. Because we're using Canvas, because we're using an outside vendor with the simulation, an outside vendor with the assessment, and ultimately, different browsers and operating systems, the best thing that you can do when you have a technical issue is to really alert the help desk and let them assist you through it. The only thing I will say is that if you're cramming and waiting until the last minute, work is supposed to be submitted and you can't, then you may want to let me know because Canvas is automatically set to give you a zero grade if the work is not submitted in a timely fashion. Not at 11.59, not at 12. It will set it off at 12.01. If the work is not there, you're getting a zero. So if you want to let me know that you're having a technical issue in advance, that I'll accept. But don't let me know that, hey, the lockdown browser is not working or I can't submit to Canvas. If you waited until 11.59 at night, nothing I, I can do if you're having a technical issue with there. Okay. And last but not least, I do work, want to recommend if you're having an issue in the classroom, you're having an issue with anything related to the university that needs to be resolved. Ms. G is probably one of the most incredible resources I've ever come upon. So I do want and encourage you to reach out to Ms. G. If you feel more appropriate and you want to reach out to me and you then ultimately want me to have her uh, reach out to you, I can do that too. But we are here for one thing, your success. We are here for one thing, to help you matriculate with this particular class. And I can't do that without proper communication. I can't do that without good drive from you. So I'm expecting a great class. I'm ex expecting a great term, and I'm looking forward to working with you this particular class. I wish you a great rest of the day. I'll look forward to seeing you in discussion, in the simulation, in the group. God bless.